Hooligan escapades and tender love stories, vice and innocence, guile and sensuality, gorgeous landscapes and palaces of Rome, Florence and Tuscany, beautiful faces and chic costumes, in ironic and poignant novellas in the tradition of the eternal Decameron. As seven centuries ago, in the days of old Boccaccio, young bodies and souls merged in an ecstasy of beauty and passion, overcome the merciless plague and sing a hymn to the joy of life and love. Hello, everyone. This is Recap Movie Hub. Today, I'm going to tell you about the movie Virgin Territory. The movie begins with the introduction of the narrator of this story, and he is just painting a church. He's been doing it for a long time, but still hasn't received any money. The man goes to the priest to get the money, but discovers that the man died of the plague. Upon realizing this, he is very disappointed because now he will not receive his paycheck. Then the man sees the clergyman's clothes, and after putting them on, he decides to become a reverend, because such people always live in prosperity. Afterwards, he tells the story of Lorenz, who is in love with Pampanea, and runs away from Gerbino. But thanks to his friends, he gets a horse and leaves town. Pampanea, on the other hand, grieves for her dead parents and tells Gerbino that she will marry a count from Russia. Upon hearing this, the man says that her late father owes him money, and now that he is dead, the entire inheritance must go to him. Then he says that the girl must marry him if she wants to keep her parents' estate. Now back to Lorenzo, who tries to get rid of his pursuers. While fleeing, he stumbles upon a man carrying the body of a deceased deaf and dumb gardener from a church nearby. Without much thought, Lorenzo decides to take the gardener's place, but he must first get rid of his pursuers. The lad climbs a tree and the guards pass by, but a branch breaks and Lorenzo falls and loses consciousness. The nuns approach him and carry him to the church, exactly where the gardener has recently been taken from. The two excited nuns begin to examine Lorenzo and take advantage of the situation to kiss him on various places. Suddenly a mother appears and inquires about Lorenzo's condition, who in turn pretends to be deaf-mute. The girls are delighted and believe that he has been sent by God. Immediately thereafter, the mother orders the nuns to help Lorenzo take a bath, and they join in the treatment, exposing their bodies and bringing the guest unforgettable pleasure. In the next scene, we see Pampinea with her girlfriends and their young men. It is here that the girl announces that she has a second home in this town, where she will marry a count from Russia, as her father willed. At this point, Gerbino appears and asks what is going on. Pampinea makes up an excuse, and the would-be groom warns that it is dangerous to run away from town. He also draws attention to the young men who were friends of Lorenzo, making them answer for what the fugitive has done. The narrator intervenes and orders them to hide the blades, as they are in a sacred place. Pampinea decides to flee to another church to meet the Count, and her friends think she has gone to her second home. As the two nuns prepare Pampinea, she notices Lorenzo and learns that he works as a gardener and is deaf-mute. Later, Pampinea notices a young man having fun in the bushes with another woman, making her jealous. This makes her forget about her potential fiancé from Russia. At this time, Count Zerzhinsky arrives in town where he meets his rival, who informs him that Pampinea is going to marry him. The Count, offended, prepares to leave, but then he is informed that the girl is waiting for him at her second home, where he heads. Lorenzo at this time was resting in his room when two nuns brought him lunch and began hinting at his affairs with other women. They wanted to make love to him as well. We want what you gave them. And we want it now. Lorenzo cannot believe his luck and enjoys the girls. The next day, Pampinea, along with the other girls, carries hot water for Lorenzo. She cannot stand it and tells the nuns that all their actions are sin. One of the ladies is convinced that there is nothing wrong with it, accusing the girl of jealousy. Pampinea becomes angry and pours hot water on Lorenzo. I hope you drown. Meanwhile, Count Zerzhinsky was attacked losing his escort, but he managed to escape. Pampinea's feelings for Lorenzo grew stronger, and one day the girl hears the guy singing a song. She realizes that Lorenzo is neither dumb nor deaf. Later, Pampinea goes to feed Lorenzo and closes his eyes and kisses him. Although the gardener does not know who it was, he feels a special thrill. A few days later, Pampinea prepares to go home, 
but before he does, he tells his mother that Lorenzo is neither dumb nor deaf and has been pretending all along. When Lorenzo is dismissed because of this, he sees a former nun drive by and asks Pampanea to take him with her. She agrees. At this time, the Count sees a girl bathing in the river, begins talking to her, and informs her that he is going to marry Pampanea. Hearing this, the girl lies and introduces herself by a false name. As Dzerzhinsky has never seen his beloved in person, he takes her at her word, all the more so as he is attracted to the lady. Meanwhile, the couple arrive at the country house, where Lorenzo tells them that he has fallen in love with the girl who kissed him and intends to find her by any means to marry her. Pampanea claims that the guy will forget about his sweetheart as soon as he kisses someone else and offers her as an experiment. Of course, she wanted Lorenzo to know that she was the one who blindfolded him that day. The lovers began to reach out to each other as Gerbino unexpectedly arrives, along with his guard. Lorenzo challenged him to a duel and was defeated. Trying to keep her beloved alive, the girl demands his pardon, otherwise marriage is out of the question, and Gerbino agrees to this condition. Later, she sets a new condition. After the wedding, he must leave Lorenzo forever. The husband-to-be pondered the proposal and sent his guards to fetch the reverend father. Then Pampanea visited the saint and offered him money not to marry them and to delay the wedding as long as possible. The reverend agreed to this. At this time, two guards lead Lorenzo into the woods to kill him, but the opposite happens. Lorenzo then sees Zerzhinsky heading toward Pampanea's house and decides to follow him. A wedding begins in the city, but the priest tries to prevent it, which arouses the anger of Gerbino, who threatens him with his sword. He at once declares them husband and wife. Suddenly, the Count, armed with a pistol, bursts into the ceremony and the groom flees. At this time, Lorenzo arrives at the wedding. In the end, Dzerzhinsky fights one-on-one -on -one with Gerbino, defeating him. It is then that Lorenzo asks for the chance to kill his rival himself. During the fight, the man falls into a well and dies. Afterwards, Pampanea tells the Count that she cannot marry him because she loves Lorenzo. When Dzerzhinsky sees her face, the man realizes that she is not the one he was looking for. Meanwhile, Melissa, the friend of the bride we saw at the lake, approaches them. The Count is very happy to see her. Pampanea then proposes to Lorenzo, but he insists that he will marry the one who blindfolded him that day. The girl asks Lorenzo to kiss her, and he realizes that she is the one and agrees to the marriage. That's all for today. Subscribe and like it if you want more videos like this.